Hey y'all, it's Shay Seeking and I'm here with a quick video. Um, I had this um, little article pulled up for a couple days um, and I just wanted to kind of go in on it with you guys. Um, to start off with, because I usually go into rants and forget what the main reason why I made the video is. The main reason why I'm, um, I don't want everybody to, I don't want you to think that I want you to think the way that I'm thinking when I'm looking at this. Right. I, I, I like to bring information to people that we might not as a group be paying too much attention to because we're being distracted by so many things. But that may cause some problems for us in particular and everyone at the end of the day. So when I'm looking at this article, it just makes me really think just by, from watching how they've been affecting the weather and playing with the weather and how looking into history to start looking at a lot more of these uh, catastrophes and these uh, things that people are saying are maybe global warming, but I think that they're just natural uh, labor pains that the earth goes through with a certain amount of years or whatever over and over again. Like they say, history repeats itself. I think this weather thing is something, and they have an advantage on us because they know that these particular things happen. And I do think that they dabble in messing with the weather and learning how to alter things and stuff like that. But sometimes I think, do they really have as much power when it comes to all these things as we think they do? Or is it just they have the upper hand because they know about these things in advance that usually happen and they've been keeping track of them? And if some of these things are deliberately done, um, or some of these things are really just natural uh, birth pains, okay? So um, I really think that this flooding to me is showing me right away that people need to really get serious. I know we have so much other stuff going on right now um, in the world, and you know, somebody might even think that it's not even worth it because of what's going on with the weather and stuff like that. But I really think that we owe it to ourselves, our children, our community um, to at least try and learn how to grow one thing. Um, start a garden, grow something, grow a tree, an apple tree, or whatever, something you can put in your backyard or if you're in an apartment or something, you can do strawberries or container gardening. But I really think that everybody needs to really start focusing on that. Because I'm, I, somebody like me, I used to be a big shopper, couponer, clearance shopper. I used to, you know, um, do a lot of online selling and stuff like that. So I would be at stores, you know, like a zombie at 2 o'clock in the morning trying to get um, deals and trying to do my couponing and stuff like that. And... You know, I'm just, I, I'm just saying I've spent a lot of time in the stores and I've noticed over the years that sometimes you can go in and find that the whole area where maybe like the salad and stuff is will be empty for like two or three days. Um, you know, empty, entirely empty. And then I've noticed that a lot more stores are starting to put like the salad uh, section. You can find stuff that looks particularly fine, but the date is expired and They'll, you know, chop the price um, down half or whatever. Um, but usually it would be just like one <laughs> particular salad, uh, you know, that they mark down. But now, like, the whole roll is marked down. And then there's, like, two or three options that you can choose and get it for a little bit less because, you know, I guess of the date or whatever. But what I'm just saying, the quality and the quantity is just not there. Um, I noticed that a lot of remodeling going on in these stores are making the stores a little bit smaller. Um, the vegetable area, um, doesn't have the abundance that it once had in a lot of the stores that I even still go to to go grocery shopping today. So I'm just wondering if like we can already be feeling the effects of these floods or is there more flooding that we don't even know about that has occurred that it might be already affecting. And that's why we get a lot of our stuff imported. Of course, we've been getting stuff imported for a long time, but how much are we really getting? And do we really want to, um, do we want to start paying attention to if a lot of our stuff is coming from China? I know a lot of you have probably seen those videos go around about the fake food, um, and the plastic food and a lot of me, I, I, I know um, onions are one of my favorite things to cook with. Um, I could probably just eat onions uh, sauteed with like rice or something because I like them so much. But I've noticed that there's like a filmy layer. Like I, I've been cooking since I was nine. So um, I I remember I, like the aroma. Yeah, onion will make you cry. But some of these onions are so 
Like, uh, I was eating an onion one day. I cooked it. No, I didn't cook with it. I think I was eating it raw. Um, I had had it chopped up on something. And the it was so, like, uh, potent that it was burning my throat. It was burning up into my nostrils, like ammonia or something when I was eating on this onion. Um, it's just slight changes. Um, when you go to the grocery store, there might be 30 green peppers um, instead of just being an abundance of them. The, the You can tell that the little thing that it's in is, is um, kind of bare. And um, and then the ones that, they're, that are there, they're all shriveled up and soft. They're not even hard and crunchy and crisp. Man, and, you know, it's just little small things that I pay attention to. So, in other words, I just don't know if this is just, you know, this could slowly eat away and cause like a famine. And, you know, maybe some of these famines that we, as we go back and look in history, uh, we find out that some of these famines were not, I think they want to take credit for a lot of things that were just nat naturally occurring because of the effects that were going on with the earth. And they want to take credit for some of these things um, to install fear in people. Um, not to say that they haven't cut people off from lands and resources, resources and stuff in the past. So I want to just get that out of the way. I said the part where I feel like everybody should really seriously think about starting a community garden or doing something in your backyard so that if things really hit the fan, we we can be a slightly resourceful. If what what would you even do today if they said that everybody has to get this chip or you can't grocery shop or you have to do this or you can't do this? Like I just think we need to be a little bit more self sufficient. Even if we live in the suburbs, even if we live in a city, you know, we need to start connecting on that level because food is something that's very important um, to sustain your health and well being. And while a lot of this stuff is GMO anyways, and you know, uh, DNA altering. Of, um, that affect the human uh, body in so many different ways and have us, you know, sick and things like this, how it's just a lot going on, guys. So I just wanted to read this thing and kind of go over it with you and just see if any of you guys think that this is something that could affect us or not, because we still haven't seen the end result of this. There's more floods to come. You know, this, this is the area where they grow most of like the corn and you know, things like this. And I think it's just very important to at least keep your eyes on it and pay attention. So says the story told in the 2000, 2019 National Hydraulic Assessment, uh, which forecasts flood risk and water supply conditions for the coming months. Um and see, like a lot of the stuff is going on in like Africa and stuff, and they just point blank say it. But a lot of the stuff they have to kind of sweet talk us Americans since we think that we have some rights, some freedoms, and some choices. So, you know, you, the water quality and stuff like that. How can you can you equate the uh, what is it in Michigan? The Flint water condition, um, just because those people still live in particular in like a house or whatever in a neighborhood, you look at the same thing. If you don't have no water, <laughs> it's the same thing as the people that live in huts and stuff that are in Africa and they don't have good drinking water. Um, yeah, they can go as hound over and try to get it, but you know, it's still harming you every day in your house. You're in contact with this water is around you 24 hours a day. You know, it's just kind of sad or whatever, like third world, you know, and I think since we don't see people with no clothes on walking around, not to say that that's how everybody is in Africa, I'm just saying, um, that we don't look at that condition like it's so bad until we, uh, more and more towns start seeing this type of thing happen and then we'll really see where it goes after that. But that's why I just say, just pay attention. So... Okay, the water conditions for the coming months is a wet one. This winter has brought above, too much above normal. Sorry. Particip oh, precipitation, too much of the United States, writes the National Weather Service. Several portions of the country uh, received accumulated precipitation precipitation exceeding 200% of the average to date. Almost all of the central and eastern U.S. faces an elevated risk of flooding this spring. 
and 25 states are likely to experience moderate or major flooding. This isn't news to most people in the Midwest who are dealing with this catastrophic results of the recent uh, bomb cyclone. Officials in the affected states estimate that the flood damage and associated economic losses total in the billions, and it's only March. The NOAA's prediction shown that over 200 million people, along with their homes, possessions, and communities, are at risk during the spring. It's potential unpredicted, uh, unprecedented flood season. Okay, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of people, and the, and those people, although those people are going to be affected immediately, affected by the flooding, or could be. There's other people where it's going to uh, bounce off or ricochet off of other towns and communities that don't get the stuff that we were getting moved in from those particular areas. And see, the thing that worries me about something like this, like how I say man-made, natural, all this other stuff. Um, I noticed that one of the stories that was, um, saw another person doing a video, he was going deeper into it. Um, and he was saying something about, uh, the national guard or the military had come into one of these, uh, counties or whatever. And, um, I guess they had said that they needed to reduce the, ah, what am I trying to think of? They needed to reduce the levy or the, I believe it was like the levy um, from whatever it was to five feet. And they hadn't seen any flooding over that for the past couple years. So they weren't concerned about it. Why would they have to do that? I don't know, but this was actually on the news and you know, I don't believe everything that's on the news, but I do still listen and I pay attention and I make my own judgment at the end, like everybody else should do as well. But, um, it's just funny how they said that. And then, a couple of weeks later, that's when the actual flood came in. And this time it happened to be nine feet instead of the um, under five feet like it had been. So they shaved it down in order for this flood to come through. Or did they just didn't know? Or I mean, come on, like this stuff like that just makes me want to scream because they're actually saying this on the national news and nobody seems to be picking up on it. But um, anyways, let's see. Stuff like that just makes me think if some of this stuff is being done deliberately. We know about the levees in, um, what was it, uh, Louisiana. And, you know, there's always some inconsistencies with these stories. So it says, so far, major disasters, declarations in Nebraska and Ohio, um, Iowa uh, mean that affected area and those states will be eligible for federal recovery funding. And then uh, I don't like hearing stuff like that, like federal uh, martial law, federal assistance, federal recovery. You know, I just don't, because mm, it's just so funny how, like I said before, a lot of these places, you never hear from these people again. It's like, whatever happened, we'll, we'll get a group of mothers from some of these false flags or uh, some of these crisis actors from... Some of these, now I'm not saying that all of them are, but a lot of stuff you see on mainstream media are just that. So that we'll just keep it there. Um, but, um, and anybody that hasn't spent the time to look deeper into it and connect with other people that have looked deeper in it and, um, use your own judgment and discernment and get all up out of your feelings if you haven't done those things, then don't judge somebody that has done those things and can see a pattern in what these people do. So um, if they can get all these people together after Sandy Hook and after all this other stuff or whatever, how come they can't get some of these people from these floods together so that we can kind of see where they've gone, if they need help, if they're okay? You know, um, we never heard back from the people that were on the barges. We talk about everything on the, else on the news. I just wouldn't think, I don't, I don't understand why these things wouldn't be important or people wouldn't want to see where what's happening to their fellow Americans when after these floods. I mean, did they really get washed out with the flood? Is it something true with the, what that old guy said on the news about they were killing people at the Red Cross and all these other things when he was going to go there and... They asked him, why was he sleeping on the street at night? And he said, oh, yeah, because they were killing people and I wasn't about to go there. You know, was this true? Like, what, what's going on? Um, th these are missing people in my eyes. I mean, we, we already know that there's several just up and just missing people in the country. Um, 
more people of color than anything, but we don't talk about it. So it's just like, it's not there. But then again, I mean, you have this. And to me, um, I'm, I feel like I'm the only one asking, where are those people? Where are the people? It's just strange. So anyways, um, FEMA and all that, like, I just don't know. Mm, I just, uh, just telling you now that I'm, I don't trust nobody in scooping me up and taking me somewhere to do whatever the hell they think that I'm sorry. Um, we'll have to find out what we're going to have to do, but I, I don't agree with that being scooped up, taking places in bulk, <laughs> like, uh, human, uh, cattle or chattel. <laughs> so to each his own, um, recent analysis from NPR shows that federal funded home buyouts a way to permanently un- eliminate flood risk from a property and allow residents to move to higher ground uh, disproportionately take place in white communities. Hmm. Federal disaster aids um, is allocated based on cost benefit uh, calculation meant to minimize taxpayers' risk writes the NPR report, Robert Benincasa, Benincasa, that means money is not necessarily dolled up out. Okay, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm really not the best reader out loud. Like I used to be like getting an attitude with the teacher and tell her to pass me because I didn't like reading out loud in front of people. So, you know, I, this is my first time actually doing this. So just bear with me. I do know how to read. <laughs> I'm just faster when I'm just reading to myself. Um, okay. That means money is not necessarily dolled out to those who need it most, to those who need it most, but rather to those whose property is worth more. Okay. Okay. So that's a way to, um, discriminate without saying it. Um, and to those who own property in the first place. Okay, so these are ways um, that mirrors the existing racial wealth gap in the United States. And notice how this flooding has all found its way in this whole little uh, um, article to lead back to race, racial discrimination or discrimination like in general. So in a company, accompanying... Uh, NPR story illustrates other ways that current disaster policies widen economic inequalities. The factors that rise that rises to the top is the privilege of time. A wealthier family with access to savings might be able to rent a temporary home and wait for buyout funding to arrive. For example, while a family without such resources might have no choice but to sell. To a developer, I'm pretty sure you know, it just kind of feels like this this country is being chopped up and sold off along with its stock, and that's you and me, um, and white folks too. I told y'all that. I'm more worried about what's going on with my people because I think we've been deceived more, and we've been more has been put on us. And sometimes you have to be the bigger person or the bigger older race and you have to step to the line even when you know that the forefathers or the fathers have been treating you a certain way you have to just be fair and honest that does not mean that we haven't been pushed but i'm just saying equally they don't even realize that they're slaves so everybody needs to wake up on their own different level but yes we have been the ones we're at the bottom of the totem pole everywhere indigenous dark brown copper color people um, yes, and that's who I'm fighting for right now because I want to bring atten- things to their attention that they have not probably thought about in the past and that we should be very, very concerned of or with. So, uh, for example, while a family without such resources might have no choice but to sell to a developer, and that's something that they probably want to do in the first place, or walk away from their home. Uh, and then insurance and all that stuff, I'm pretty sure they know some people don't, some folks don't want to get it. You know, time is also required to navigate, excuse me, complex funding process to figure out insurance benefits or to meet with federal emergency management agencies, FEMA. Hmm. 
um, representatives. I would, that's just would be the last thing I would want to do. I just don't know, y'all. I just don't get a good feeling. And this is just from re research, but we're not on that topic right now, so I'm not going to go all the way into it. Um, the NPR story profiled a Microsoft employee who received as much time off as he needed from his employer in the aftermath of Hurricane Harvey. The story also described a mail carrier who worked six days uh, wait, six day weeks and never missed a shift, even during the week of the storm. Guess who was better able to fulfill FEMA's requirements for uh, assessing and using disability? Oh, dis disaster aid. Sorry. Okay, it's almost over, y'all, and it'll get better. I promise. As stated in the NPR story, and as I decided or discussed in a previous blog post, the bigger picture around the country is that some Americans will be more vulnerable. That's meaning you. Um, and will be more resilient in the face of climate change. And we're going to be resilient, but we have to be aware first. We have to know that this stuff is going on. And, some, and we have to know that some of the stuff is natural and some of the stuff is man-made. And... If you want to call the natural God, you may, up to your own discretion, or something uh, just natural, um, so be it. Um, but I, I think that they use the, the Bible and stuff like that um, to kind of give this a name um, to like the end times and, you know, what God was going to do. And I think some of this stuff is just what naturally occurs, you know, in the earth or whatever. So, um and who wins and who loses appears to mirror existing inequalities. And that's what I'm saying. Who wins and who loses to mirror existing inequalities? Like we're going back to race. Everything has to do with you in the first place. I will have you know that. But it's just funny how they word it that way. There are ways to improve our nation's approach to preventing and dealing with flood losses that could help make the process more streamlined, accessible, um, equatable. As we look ahead at this spring's flood outlook and beyond, it is not too late to make sure that affected people and communities will have access to resources they need not only to recover from these floods, but to stay safer in the face of the future risks. So anyway, it goes, there's always a underlining, um, problem or effects and and things and I'm just saying we just need to be aware and the main thing um I'm sorry I had to <laughs> drag you guys through that horrible reading that I just did but you can go back and watch it or look it up on um line here I'm pretty sure they still have it up but you know if you look at a lot this is a lot of land a lot of people are going to be affected and just think those 200 million families their things their homes what, I mean, are they just going to disappear too? And we're just not going to ask questions about where are these people? I just don't agree with it. I mean, I, I saw truckloads of people being led off supposedly to a Walmart and then they were going to be sent somewhere else um, after that. But um, I mean, you didn't, yeah, you can hear from me that there's um, people that have several videos about FEMA and Walmart and these Walmarts that have closed down. Um, I would like to see if some of these flood areas have these Walmarts near these areas that are affected where people are actually going um, to these camps or people might think concentration camps or something. I just really think that even if they thought that people thought this was a conspiracy theory that they were closing down these stores and using them for FEMA um, or some kind of camps or something, I just don't know why somebody wouldn't speak more on where these it's kind of like they know that you don't care and that you moved on and nobody's asking questions about these people on these barges and these people that were just scooped up after these floods and we you know can we hear a good story about the rebuilding or something of anything i mean i don't know maybe i mean if you guys know of something just go ahead and you know maybe drop me a link if you can down um below in the comments but i'm just very concerned that we're not concerned about where these people went so, 
Um, okay, thanks you guys for watching, and um, I promise to do better at reading next time. <laughs> um, I will see you guys soon. Bye.